I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that flight test. That was a lot of fun with this AR Pro. It is pretty nimble. And one of the reasons it's so super nimble is because of the power system on here. We got 1104, 7500 kV motors, and the rates were turned up really high on this out of the box. In beta flight, uh, I was looking at 85, 80, and like 75 on the rates for the, uh, the stick sensitivity on the radio. So it's super high. So you might want to dial those back to about 70 to 75, and then it'll fly a lot smoother. So if you look at this out of the box, they do give you a, quite a few different choices for receiver setups uh, on this AR Fun Pro. It, it's cool because you can get the PNP, which is plug and play, that comes without the receiver. So if you have one of these radios that's not listed here, uh, FlySky, FRSky, or Spectrum radio, if you do Fatava, you could get the PNP and put your own micro receiver on here. So that's pretty cool. You can also run it PPM or S bus protocols. Um, I have the BNF, the Bind and Fly FRSky D8 mode, and that just turns on the inside of the radio. You turn on D8 mode mode and hold down the bind button. It's pretty simple to bind it up. Uh, have it bound up within about five seconds. Also, uh, Spectrum guys aren't left out in the cold because you have DSMX and two different FlySky protocols. This is the AFHDS2A and the standard AFHDS version. So the whole takeoff weight on this quad is under 100 grams. Uh, for the quad itself is actually uh, 56 grams and the battery that comes along with it. It's a 2S 500 milliamp, uh, 7.4 volts and it's 30 C. So that's, that's not bad. I was getting like four minute flight times with this and it is branded Aurora RC, the same brand that uh, this particular quad is. But uh, you know, four minutes is not too bad. This battery itself weighs 29.8 grams. Now they do give you a little receiver configuration card and this is pretty cool because it shows you for how to hook up your tabs uh, in your ports menu. If you're going to use a PPM receiver, you wanna set it up like this. You don't have to have any of these serial RX checked. And down at the bottom, this shows you DSM2, DSMX, SBUS, and IBUS there. Uh, and it shows you which tabs to have checked 
to set it up to get receiver channels working inside Betaflight. That's pretty nice that they do that because uh, some of these other quads, you kind of had to sit here and fiddle around and figure out which the uh, which uh, UR had to be active and then which Serial RX had to be active. And a lot of times they're different on each board. Now, what I thought was cool about this quad is the fact that it does come with a buzzer and LEDs on the back. Now, my only beef with this, and this is a great review because I get to show you the guys these things. Um, if you decide to buy this one, I was out of the field flying it and mine started falling off, uh, mainly because it shifted a little bit and then it got hit by a prop. And uh, I just had to rip the whole thing off there, um, mainly because I couldn't continue my flight test with this in the way. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take a little tiny piece of B, a VHB and put underneath here. And uh, you don't have to disconnect these wires on the back. Just go ahead and sit it back down and make sure it's nice and snug and not touching your props back here. But there is actually a little slot right back here where that will plug into. Now it is a 25 milliwatt transmitter, but it also has six different bands on here, 48 different channels, and you can change those. There's a little button on the very top of this VTX camera. Uh, there's actually two here. One of them will flip the screen and the other one will change bands and channels. Uh, you can't change the power on this transmitter, by the way. And if this camera shifts at all, left or right, you're gonna start hitting props. But this one seems to have better clearance than the original AR phone, which I like a lot. Cause the original one, I like the specs on it, but I hated the fact that the props hit the camera. Uh, so somehow this one has a little better clearance. Uh, this one is a 95 millimeter. Uh, also 3K carbon fiber. But I, I gotta say my probably my worst critique for this quad in this review, and it wouldn't be a review without giving you guys pros and cons, would be that this is the weak point of this quad right here. Now this frame itself, um, if you need to buy a new frame, it's about $6. But if you fly like I do, you're probably gonna crack stuff. And I cracked this one right there. Um, so in my flying, I did smash it into something out in the playground, but that's to, that's to be expected, that's typical. Um, but I can show you guys durability factor on this quad. Now, let me tell you what else is cool about this quad. Uh, it does have OSD. A lot of these new ones do have OSD and that's great because uh, I just, I, I really have to have OSD on a lot of my quads this year. Now, the other thing is, is that they included my favorite prop at the moment, which is the gem fans. Those are the 2035 props. And I got three different colors here. I've got this uh, sort of purple, blue, and clear. So I'm super stoked about that. When these first came out, I kind of gave them a half-assed review because I thought they broke too easy. But um, during my flight test today, I was banging all over the place. It didn't seem like I could keep it in the air today, but um, just one of those days, you know what I mean? But um, the props held, even after this one arm bent and cracked on me, uh, the props did not break. They twist all over the place and you can just twist them back. So these are awesome props. Uh, and if you want to, you can run this little guy on 3S because these uh, ESCs inside here are BL Heli 20 amp ESCs. So plenty of power on this little guy. Uh, I look forward to um, making this repair on this one and getting this one back in the air uh, as soon as possible and doing a little 3S with this little AR Fun Pro. But moving in the right direction and uh, what I would suggest to you guys is maybe use prop guards on this. I have another one sitting over here. This one was the original AR Fun and because of that weak point I always run prop guards on it now. And uh, these are the King Kong prop guards and one of the reasons that I do that is because when it crashes it takes the brunt of the force off of the arm and puts it out here on the prop guard. So as you can see already I've broken this pair right here. So this broke instead of the frame breaking. So. That's, uh, that's what I would suggest. And these are the um, King Kong 90 GT props. But for this one, you might need 95 uh, GT larger style props to accommodate that frame. Because this frame is, I believe, is should be a little bigger than that original AR fun. I think the original AR was, was a 90, I believe, this one was. Um, but anyway, that's about it for our review of the AR fun 90 Pro. A 95 Pro. I think it's a, um, a good quad. Just keep it away from the playground equipment and you should be just fine. Uh, and if you do have to buy a new frame, it's probably about $6. So not the end of the world. You can get a new frame, new parts. But otherwise, uh, dial those rates back and you'll have a really awesome flying quad. Thanks again for watching, you guys. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.